Hi, and thanks for joining us on another great edition of Two Guys and a Lot of Wine. Tonight's Two Guys, One Gal and a Lot of Wine. And I am pleased yet again to have one of my dearest friends, um, Kaylin McBee, owner of Balance Massage and Wellness Center. And we're going to be doing something really special for you. We're going to be doing healthy mocktails followed by popped tails. So this is sort of a <laughs> Valentine's and spring type <laughs> show. So, you know, when you're watching this show, I think uh, probably, what, in February, late February? Yeah. So spring's just around the corner. So we're going to have some refreshing wines and, more importantly, healthy mocktails for your taste buds. So I'm going to turn everything over to Kaylin. We're going to get started with two mocktails from Kaylin McBee. Well, hi, everybody. And, Bobby, thanks so much for having me again. I'm super excited about being here. Um, apparently, I win the contest of the most number of bottles that I, I can believe put you in do. front of me in a single A lot session. of bottles. So, um, as Bobby mentioned, I'm the owner of Balance Massage and Wellness Center. We are located in Newington, and we are a wellness center for all of your health and wellness needs. We offer massage and Reiki and biomat services, as well as organic and natural skincare. We have yoga classes. We have all sorts of interesting seminars and things. So, it's a great place for um, building your own health. And so... In conjunction with that, I thought it would be a great idea to focus on two mocktails that can also be made into a cocktail. So for a lot of reasons, there are um, people that are choosing to not have alcohol. So whether it's for a single night, maybe you're the designated driver, or maybe you're doing um, a dry January, or you're just sort of um, taking a night off. So I thought this could be a really fun way to... Those months of dryness are in right now, right? People take a month off. Yeah, I think... A lot of times people overindulge in the holiday time and they just sort of need mm -hmm. a little break. And I think that's good. You know, I'm a firm believer in everything in moderation, including moderation. So um, the first mocktail that we are going to do is actually a hot toddy. And this is really great for if you're feeling under the weather, believe it or not. Um, so the, the, it starts with hot water that has one tablespoon of honey in it. And at the center, we offer a couple of these as a part of our retail. So our local honey comes from a Farmington apiary. So that's where the honey is from. So locally sourced, that's good. Locally sourced, yep. So we really try to focus on um, local owned businesses, mostly women owned businesses actually. This is a women owned business. Um, happy, happy Hive Apiary. They are in Farmington. So this is just two cups of water that has a tablespoon of that local honey in it, which is great. And then making it into the mocktail, you also add just a little bit of lemon juice. So that gives a little bit of the tart. About a teaspoon or yeah, tablespoon? Yeah, just, just a kind of a little splash. So do you want to taste them as mocktails first and then try yes. them as the cocktail? sure, yeah. All right, perfect. Why not? So we'll do a little stir here while you all are trying these. You've already put the honey in it? Yep, the yeah. honey already. It was in the hot water? It was in the hot water because otherwise it doesn't dissolve very well. So that has already been mixed for you there. Mm. So uh, local honey mm. is really, I know it might be a little. That's um, okay. Cheers. Cheers. It might be a little warm. So oh. it's got the sweetness from the honey and a little bit mm. of the tart from the lemon. Very nice. Um, local honey is really good for um, your sore throat. It's good mm. if you've got like a little scratchy of your yeah. throat. And it's also really good for seasonal allergies. If you take a little teaspoon every day, it helps to combat some of those hay fever I've had this weird fever, dry cough, shortness of breath, and sudden loss of taste and smell for the last couple. I'm just kidding. Oh my <laughs> god! Well then, like just no, but this is, all uh, over me. Yeah, this, is, <laughs> this is really good, just like yeah. this. And often we do this. This is um, my husband Josh. This is like if I'm sick, I can definitely yeah. feel myself getting better. Exactly. I, I'm not and sick, but so to make it a, a true hot toddy, you add bourbon. Now we're going. To, which we go. is delicious. Now. Um, you can sort of add as much or as little as apply you to want. taste. Yes, That's apply, right. to apply to taste. taste. Apply to taste. That's good. And what's the bourbon that we're using here? Um, this whiskey. This one uh, is a Woodford oh Woodford. Reserve. I like that. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. So yeah. it was a really nice little. I don't know if you guys want to mix or not. It's fine. And so this is oh, really yeah. great bourbon. to have mm -hmm. at the end of the day. So if you're feeling under the weather, the honey and the lemon juice. And lemon, by the way, is really good um, 
for purifying. It's a good immune system support. Mm. And so this is really great. And then, especially for those people who don't drink bourbon, the bourbon might make you a little bit sleepy. So this is a really good nighttime drink if you're feeling under the weather. So it's in a way, it's like a, you could make this a nightcap like you would with some other the hot drinks, like a Bailey's coffee or something Absolutely. like that. Absolutely, yeah. Because that's always my contention. I generally don't drink hot alcoholic drinks, mm -hmm. usually because I don't drink them fast enough. Once they cool down, I don't find them very tasty anymore. No, you d I definitely think that it's much better in um, being warm. Yeah. It's almost kind of like a mold hot cider or something along those lines, so it's nice to kind of just sip on. <laughs> I don't know if this is a Tennessee thing, but my grandmother used to give us a shot of whiskey when we were little kids, yeah. you know, if we were sick. That's, I mean, it explains a lot, <laughs> really. I mean, I might have been dropped on my head a couple of times, too, but that, that kind of no, contributed I think that, to that, who that's I am a good thing. today. So. Does it have to be bourbon, or could it be any type of whiskey, or does bourbon is probably what's best known for? So bourbon is a whiskey that tends to be a little bit sweeter, and I so I like that combination because the honey and the tartness of the lemon pairs, I think, really well with more of the sweetness of the bourbon. If you're someone who doesn't uh, prefer sweeter drinks. You can do it with even a blended whiskey is fine, or you can knock off a little bit of the honey if you like more of the tart of the lemon. Mm. So, um, so yeah, this is the hot toddy. Yes. Yeah. Believe it or not, I've had a doctor prescribe this to me because mm. they know that I prefer going the more holistic routes if I'm not feeling well. Yeah. And so there's a lot of <clears throat> biomes in the honey and the whiskey actually has some health benefits and then, of course, it does make you a little bit sleepy, so that can help you get. I mean, the most of your over-the-counter cough remedies have ethyl alcohol in them. Yeah, this, something this, just, this, to, just it yeah. sort of calms that cough. It's a little yeah. bit of a cough suppressant in that sense. Too. Here's what I would say, Bobby and the Toddy. I would say, why not? Excellent. Thumbs up. <laughs> oh my God, I love your um, Bobby and the Toddy. Why not? That's, mm -hmm. that's a definitely Bobby and the Toddy. Why not? Why not? That's, that's going to be our new theme. That's we got it. <laughs> Somebody writing this down. I We're going to have a new theme that. song. It's going to incorporate. So that was that was very enjoyable. Right. So that was good, right? That was a good one. Yeah. All right. So next up, we have. Pardon my hands. They're clean. I promise. Oh, it's okay. Um, so we have. What and if they're clean? not, we're going to be cured by the hot If you get us sick, right. just pour us another hot toddy, and we'll be well yeah. within minutes. Well, well, well. It's a, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's the, the elixir of the gods. Really, yes. is what it is. Right. So this is going to be an elderberry ginger Ooh. fizz. Oh, did you see Ooh. what I did there? I like that. Ginger. See what I did there? Okay. So as the cocktail, it's a gin-based cocktail, okay. um, which you know some people love. Um, where is? So I have gone ahead and brewed um, six ounces of elderberry tea. So this is one of the loose leaf teas that we actually sell at the center as well. Mm -hmm. This is a locally owned brand. This is from the Herbal Diva. She's located down on the shoreline. And this particular tea has elderberry, rose hips, hibiscus, and elderflower in it. So I've pre-brewed this tea and we're gonna dump all of that in. And just for my own ignorance, when you say pre-brewed, you brew this just like you would any other tea, that same type of... Yeah, uh, so this is actually a loose leaf tea. So you pour the water into the pot. Yep. You put the... It looks just like twigs and branches, sort of. Yes, but it's okay. like the yep. flowers and yep. all that. You put that right in, and then you... This one, you steep for a little while, and then you just strain it. Okay. Yep, easy breeze. So that is actually two parts of the tea. And then um, three quarters parts of ginger beer. Which I like the is, ginger beer, yes. Yep, which is great. Mm. Um, Fever Tree makes a really good mixer. We're just going to oh, uh, eyeball that. They have a place in uh, New York City that uh, Sandy and I like to go. Fever Tree, it's like a, uh, what's the park there? I can't think of the name of it right now. But they have, um, the Fever Park? Tree has a, a restaurant. Oh. Um, Bryant Park, I Oh, believe. Bryant Park? Yeah, yeah could yeah, be. They have a little Fever Tree restaurant there. They make really great mixers. So they mm. have um, a grapefruit soda. They have the ginger mm. beer. They've got a couple options. Yeah. So that goes in first. And then with this mix, that is um, sort of the, the mix all together. And then you have the option of doing either, if you want to make it a true mocktail, you can do a half a part of just pure lemon juice. Or you can do um, you can do a full part of this Wild Moon Botanical Seven Lemon Liqueur. So this is a locally um, owned botanical um, company that is all small batch. It's all natural ingredients. I'm assuming that you all are going to want the cocktail version. Sure. Is sure. that right? Okay, that's what I figured. So the beauty to all of these ingredients, so starting with the tea, the elderberry is a huge immune support. So if you're feeling under the weather, weather um, elderberry 
can help to boost that immune system. Oh, it smells wonderful. It smells yeah, that's good, right? So, flavor explosion, yes. flowers and lemons. Mm -hmm. and, and then the ginger beer is great. Oh, that's that might be one of my new favorites it's for good, a, right? a mock and cocktail. A mock and cocktail. So the elderberry has uh, anti or has immune, uh, immune qualities. Support right? qualities. Immune support qualities. Yeah. So right? yeah. just the tea on its own, you can do hot or cold if you wanted to. But in this setting, we're making the mocktail. So I wanted to mix it with the ginger beer. Um, ginger is um, anti-inflammatory. It's also really good for nausea, so it's good for GI health. Mm -hmm. And then, um, again, this liqueur has the essence of all these lemons in it. You can actually kind of see some of the lemon essence what in it. What is there. the alcohol content? It doesn't taste very strong to can me. I, uh, can I try a little, just yes, a, of course. a little splash of that, of just out of curiosity? Yep. It's just a, he, he. It can't yeah. be more than 30%, I don't think. No, it's, um, hmm. let me see here. It's 30 proof, so it's 15% right alcohol. Okay, so. Um, and so I like that also because even cool, if you are... That's got cool flavor to it. Yeah, yeah it's nice. Like Bob, that. did you want to try some? Uh, I don't have a spare glass. Oh. Actually, I do, right here. here. So... Uh, do we have a dump bucket? <laughs> we'll use this one when I'm done with it. Okay, perfect. Sorry. Oh, yeah. No, oh, no, no, no that's all right. We can actually put it back in here there if we, we need for... So this cocktail, again, the elderberry is great for... Um, immune support. The ginger is really good for gut and GI health. Mm -hmm. And then the lemons that are infused with the liqueur are also have antiseptic properties. They're purifying. So I thought that these were just a great mix of really healthy options for a mocktail that then can easily be converted into a cocktail if you like. Very cool. I gotta say, as a standalone, I mean, this is a great aperitif it's just delicious. for yourself. Yes. And there's a whole uh, wide range of these infusions. Bobby, I think you and KK came to that tasting. Do you remember? Oh, is that the one in Hartford? Yeah, exactly. Oh, yes, we've been to that place. Yeah. That's right. That's the same place. Yes. We actually still have two bottles of the stuff we bought yeah, there. delicious. We, we have not actually opened up yet. Cucumber but, and yep. chai. They have a lavender. They have a rose. And they're really perfect for mixers. Um, I mean, there's obviously alcohol in them, but it's just nice to have that other little essence. What was that place called? Was it Hartford Tasting? It's Hartford Flavor. Hartford Flavor. Hartford That's Flavor. Right. So these are from Hartford? They are. Hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, that was very fun. That was a good time there. Yeah, it was great. They're actually, I believe, opening a new place on Pratt Street right now. That's, that's really impressive. Just... On its own. On its own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't slap you in the face. It certainly it's just, does not. Uh, no, flavorful. it's light and easy. Yeah, it's, and would you say that was 30% alcohol? Yes, uh, yeah. 30 proof. So 30 proof, 15% 15 alcohol. Yeah, so okay. it's nice and light. Yeah, it's like a strong Perfect. zin. You could even do that with a wine soda that. and just have a really nice sort of aperitif after a full meal. Well, i got to say, Kellen, two spectacular mock and cocktails. Well, thanks. I, did these, are these two that you had been planning, or did you come up with these at the last minute? Or are these the ones you wanted to do tonight? Well, I knew that I wanted to focus on ingredients that had health benefits. And so when I went through some of the options that we actually offer in our retail area, I knew that I wanted to focus on the honey and make something with, that was honey-based. And then I knew that I wanted to focus on this particular tea because of the elderberry properties. Mm. So I just kind of, the hot toddy is not my makeup, but the other drink I made. Absolutely so spectacular. We cool. had a fun time um, doing different, um, different options with that. So anyways. Well, once again, thanks again. And we're going to give you some more information about Kalen's business before the end of the show. So um, that was the healthy mock and cocktail portion of the show. Now we're going to rush right into the wine version, which is the popped portion of the show. And um, I think we're going to have things that might be very enjoyable for both Valentine's Day and early spring. So I'm going to start off with one of my new favorite bubbles, uh, the Rochebel Brut. It is a dry, citrusy, um, sparkling. One of the probably the better ones I've had. This is a total wine find. And uh, so you could find this total wine anywhere. And if you like your bubbles, not just dry, but on the stone fruit citrusy side, I'm not trying to bias my two guests, but this is one of my favorites that I've tried. Mm. It's under fourteen dollars. Good nose. Thank you. And as always, French sparklings don't ever disappoint me. And when I tasted this one, I said this might be Bobby P's new favorite for the spring and summer. It's going to be uh, consumed in large quantities. Oh. Can taste the uh, minerality in that right, right, right off the bat, and if <coughs> it's one of the more stone citrusy, fruit yeah, stone yeah. fruit and citrusy. Generally, you get the strawberries in a lot of times in, in bubbles or French sparkling, 
Um, but to me, this is more citrusy than I normally um, get with a French sparkling. I'm almost getting a little bit of peach oh. in it. A little bit, yeah. I don't know. Like it is it dry enough for like you? An apricot. Do you find yeah. it sweet? No, I think it's it's nice and dry. It's lovely. It's got a good um, bubble profile. I always like a really bubbly sparkling. Otherwise, it just falls flat and what's mm. the point? Well, that's why I use these glasses. I didn't bring in bubbling glasses like I normally do. I wanted to put them in here because, as you know, we've talked about this, you can put bubbles in any type of glass. Oh, yeah. And um, I thought the flavor was good enough that it would hold up in a glass like this, even though the bubbles disperse a little quicker. But I think it's a great tasting, refreshing bubbles for your special, whatever you're doing for Valentine's Day, or going into spring and summer. At that price point, under 14 bucks, you should stock, stock up. Some and cheese. what did you say the price point was again? It's between 9.99 and 14 dollars. Oh, yeah, that's brilliant. <laughs> for a French sparkling brew, at that mm -hmm. price point, I'm usually never disappointed. And it, I love the bottle. It's a beautiful also, bottle. It's got a nice design on it, and not that you should buy a bottle of wine based upon the design of it, but it's lovely sitting on the table too. It certainly does. It looks better than the Cooks. Or the Andre. Really? <laughs> yeah, and it's a, nearly the same price point, right? I mean, you know, surprisingly, I don't know if you noticed this, Rocky. I mean, you're in the wine business a little too sometimes yourself now. Cooks and Andre, what's up with the prices? I've seen Cooks and Andres for eight ninety nine, seven ninety nine in the stores. Well, what's going on? I don't know. Uh, I guess. Yeah, I guess the, uh, you don't have the inn at supply the and demand. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't have my. I will say, I'm going to be brutally honest right. here. I've never had a problem with the flavor or taste of a brute um, Cooks. Bubbles. Uh -huh. I mean, I, some people don't like them at all, but I think they're not as bad as people think they are. They're more on the cooks. fruity side, I guess. Now, which Andre, is what no, the, but uh, Cooks, American I think, is better. consumer uh, tends to want. This one, it, I don't think that this is like a, a fruit bomb. I, it's got a little bit of citrus. It's got a little bit of maybe a peach apricot thing going on, and it's got a lot of minerality, which I like. Those are all French qualities, so it's good baseline French. And I think that this would go with just about any food that. People are always like, what do we do when there's crazy foods that's like over here and over here and over here? And this is a good one for something like Thanksgiving where there's, there's stuff that's sweet, there's stuff that's sour, there's stuff that's, you know, um, um, ham and meat. And it, this is very versatile. So this would go with just about anything. 11% alcohol, making, which is about average, yeah. I think. for So you don't get wasted with uh, the family. So I like that recommendation, too, because even with heavy things like the gravy, but yeah. also some lighter things, too, this, I think this would... A lot of the problems with food pairing, in particular with a lot of holiday things, is there will be some heavy stuff, there will be some light stuff, yeah. there will be some spicy stuff, some sweet stuff. And so, you know, you can't do a Napa Thank Cab you. with all that, or you can't do a, an Albarino with all that. But yeah. you can, something like this that's just light and sparkling, and it's not, there's nothing that's like jumping out at you, but it's just smooth and easy to drink. It would go with just about any food that you could think. And it was, not, I'm sorry, it was nice for me to find something else, because, you know, we frequent the same places, you know. Um, Wise Old Dog, Max is in town, and of course Total Wine. But I've been to Total Wine just like you have, and I've never seen this one before, and I found this about a month ago. And I, I, I don't know if they just started carrying this particular uh, brand, but I think it's a winner for the price point. Mm. Really yeah. But once again, that's my opinion, and this is a show where people give me their own opinions. I'm giving it a thumbs up. Yeah, I give it a thumbs uh, probably about 11 o'clock. Okay. Yeah. I'm a thumbs up so, on that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that's good for me. All right, Rocky, you might have to do a dump on your glass because we're going to go to your really... Clearly mine had a hole in it. Your, <laughs> your unique, <laughs> your unique <laughs> white that you brought, which I'm kind of looking forward to. I don't think that one will put me under the rug. <laughs> All right. So uh, is it up... To, uh, are we on mine? Yes. This is... Uh, I, I was in Hollis, New Hampshire, and in a pharmacy, nonetheless... Uh, but they sell this in all of the, uh, the, the New Hampshire doesn't have like regular wine stores. They have the state oh, right. wine stores, oh, I was like, right? Oh, in a pharmacy because they it's have like, wine? <laughs> oh, yeah. You can sell anything anywhere. I mean, you can, you can be a guy on the street and sell wine in New Hampshire. They have no laws. Hence um, their name. Or yes, hence their live free or die. This is the <laughs> Fulcino uh, Vineyard Live Free or Die Hillsborough County White Wine. No idea what the grapes are. There's no place to look this up. I, you can't go on Vivino it, and, and, it, and it. it's going to tell you what the variety. But you know what? Who knows? I've never had it. This could be excellent. It could be awful. I love Do going into that. Uh, <laughs> All right. Here we go. Here goes nothing. Let's see what happens. The color is very intriguing. It's but really you know, I mean, it's, like it's, I couldn't it pass it up. Very I said, golden I, have, color. I have to try this. It was just beckoning me. Now, and here we are. Oh, interesting. Thank you. Interesting room. And as usual, Rocky does his large pours again for everybody. Yes. <laughs> oh, and we don't have a dump bucket either, so sorry. Yep, there we are. There's, there's a dump bucket up. right there. 
Well, hmm. Mm. It's mm. Uh, definitely, it's <laughs> definitely <laughs> local. I almost spit that out Bob's face. Well, was this is unbelievable. This is, this is, uh, I don't know, Rock. Uh, it's, you know, you said, you said you did get it in the pharmacy. Is that where you got it? I got it in the pharmacy. Well, I don't I think, think it has any pharmaceutical it. qualities to I mean, it. Unlike your, is the Granite State. I call it. Is that Vermont? Is Vermont the Granite State? Or what's New uh, Hampshire? Uh, Live for your die? I think New Hampshire. New Hampshire is the one with the snake that's cut into sections. All right. So live for your die. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this makes me probably want to die. I won't be that to, harsh. <laughs> this is not but good. I would say living is a little tougher. <laughs> if you're but <laughs> only a little bit, only a little bit. I still think it's. Or you'd have to pay me instead of... Well, here's the thing. The flavor is very difficult to, to, to explain. It really is difficult. And that's one of the most difficult things to do on this show. We, we could talk about it, but it's hard to... Yeah. Let to I don't know what to describe this flavor as. I know it's not, but it almost tastes like corn to me. Oh, interesting. There's something... It's, like it's definitely... Sweetness it's got some... Corn, yeah, like a not, corny quality to it. I don't know that that's a great adjective for wine. <laughs> you know... It's not sickening sweet or syrupy. It doesn't linger in my palate at all. It, you could taste it, but it doesn't stay there like, a, like, say, a cheap, overly sweet wine, at least on my palate. Maybe it starts as honeysuckle and then goes to honey. something different. A little honey. It's, it's almost good, but it's not. But it's, it's, it's like, like it, missed uh, the mark. There's, there's the honeysuckle. Just missed the mark. But it's masked by what something else, that's just. Because uh, I got the honeysuckle in the beginning. It's almost like a like if you if you chewed on a piece of plastic, like a, a rubber tire or something. I would say, I'm not going to be that harsh because you know I my palate for wine is really pretty broad and it's got to be really bad for me to hate a wine. This sort of skirts that line between eh and uh. yeah. So it's it's not bad. And there could very well be a place for this, but I'm just not sure how I would utilize this I at a party. Could, I could or... see this in a sangria. I could see this oh, mixed with okay. other things and then fortified with maybe a little brandy and some fruit. And Sangria wine. I don't, it's sangria wine. I don't think there's any better way to say that it's a crappy <laughs> wine than to say this is sangria so you, wine. Guess, this sangria is when wine. the wine that we... So for <laughs> those of you that haven't worked in a restaurant, you know what the sangria wine is? It's the stuff they didn't sell the night before. That's right. Then it's like two to three days after a while you can't sell the wine and so you make it into sangria. And everybody loves it. Discount it and drink it. If you had a guess, I mean, what would you say the grape varietal is? Same that we grow here in Connecticut? Oh know. no, it's gotta be some local um, varietal that's uh, like... Maybe even something similar to what they grow uh, out in like the Finger Lakes because it's that kind of... Well, in the Finger Lakes, they do real things like Riesling, but yes, this, this is, is definitely not, not anything I've not. ever... And you know, in all fairness, it's it's New Hampshire. We can't really grow anything in no. Connecticut either. Oh, it's, what's the price point? Uh, I think I paid uh, right around 12 to $13 for this one. Yeah. It's a nice it's bottle. A, Looks good. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's a local thing. A local thing, local grape, they grew it there. You know, a lot of the vineyards that you go to um, in Connecticut, they source the wines from California and try to, sure. try to tell you that it's our stuff. But the fact is, we, in New England's not really wine growing, wow. uh, not, not great for, the, the climate's not great, the microclimates are not to be found, the soil is not great in this part of the country for growing wine. So you do what you can. And sometimes you fall short, and I will definitely say that this one is uh, not not really doing it for me. But you know, you know, I'm, I'm going to say I'm going to you know I'm going to stroke its ego a little bit, and it's warmed up a little bit. And this is the kind of white wine that might be a little better just room temperature, at least mm -hmm. on my palate, it could instead be. of cold. Maybe. I don't hate it. I'm, you know, after as you can see, I <laughs> yeah, you I don't you hate took this. a rocky pour and, uh, okay. and do not do <laughs> not hate so. this. Is it my favorite white I've had on the show in the last many months? No, but I do not hate it. So I'm going to give a cautious, give it a try. Your palate might be different. I'm going to say, let's say this is 6 o'clock. I'm going to maybe go 8 o'clock, somewhere around there. That's what I would give it. I think Karen's going to be using our dup, dup on a, cup. On yeah, I think, I'm, I think this is a thumbs down for yeah. me um, unless... I put something else. Something else. <laughs> something else in. Maybe we could create. Well, like, what if right here on air we created the best drink ever out of the uh, New no Hampshire sure. wine? <laughs> Who knows if it's even still available? Oh, God. Uh, All right. Well, once again, I, I don't hate it, so I'm going to give it uh, the 
the 10 o'clock thumb. The 10 o'clock. On a scale of 1 to 10, I give it a D minus. Oh, wow, yeah. that is bad. And you definitely don't like it. No, it's, it's definitely not my favorite. So I'm floating in my own little New Hampshire island over here on the right-hand side. Or See how it goes with The right-hand side? Yes, I'm on the right-hand side of the mm -hmm. table. So, all right, so we have time for uh, another one and also a little more discussion with tonight. So this Laura Bull Tempranillo is very interesting, Rocky, and I, I saved this because I wanted to tell you about it. So the grapes are, they're called, it's called Laura Bull. It's a Spanish wine because the grapes, the way they're kind of famous for the grapes, they actually look like a bull's face with the horns and the mm. nostrils. And it, it's, it's sort of been described as a toasty, warm mocha hug. A toasty warm oh, mocha yes. hug. Who doesn't mocha love a toasty hug. warm yeah. mocha And you could take hug. that to mean a lot of different things, but your duck bucket too? <laughs> go for it. I'm gonna um, Thanks. I'm gonna, gonna actually you, rinse the rest of the room. I don't yeah. I think I'm into that. I wanna, I wanna just remove this from my glass. <laughs> Sorry, New Hampshire. We, we love you, uh, Hollis. And but, I didn't uh, mean to um, downplay Hillsborough the Finger County. Lakes because they really do have great wine, but um, I was just meaning in the colder climate. I've had some options. bad wines from the Finger Lakes. So yeah, I've had some, I good have some good ones, ones too. too. Yeah. Some of their Rieslings tend to be a little on the green side, let's mm -hmm. just say. Uh, it tastes Maybe like a, a mouthful of spinach and green peppers. And even though this is technically a Valentine's early spring type show, I think this Tempranillo, once again, I really enjoyed this, and I think this can be drunk any time of the year. It's not heavy enough or strong, and alcohol, alcohol wise strong enough to be considered a winter wine. I think this is good on its own. Yeah, Spain, uh, some of the best deals that you can get in wine. I don't think that this has a lot of oak on it, for sure. And that's a very easy drinking wine. It's complex enough where it leaves you interested, and um, I, I enjoyed this. So that's why I saved this for you guys. I wanted to see what you thought of it. It's lighter than what I usually think of a Tempranillo to be. I think of a Tempranillo being a more full-bodied wine. This is a little bit lighter, but it still has the tannins. It's still... It's considered a fun wine in Spain. It's considered a fun Tempranillo. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't have that full-bodiedness, but it's considered a very fun... Mm -hmm. uh, easy drinking. Easy drinking. So we're, we're about a little less than two minutes left, Kayla. What's going on at Balance Massage and Wellness Center between now and uh, spring? So we are offering all sorts of interesting monthly type events. So we have uh, sound healing once a month. We have community acupuncture once a month, personal development classes. Again, we have yoga classes weekly. And if you're looking to just um, make sure that you are focusing on yourself and your health, we are always here to help. So again, if you're looking for massage, organic and natural skincare and facials, uh, some of our retail products that can help you feel your best, you can find us in Newington and also on the web at balancemassagect.com. And Brocky, what's going to get our best in glass this episode? Is it going to go to Kaylin's side of the table? Or is it going to go to the, well, we know it's probably not going to go over here. <laughs> so let's just say what it is. It's going to go to Kaylin's. No. I'm not going to let my bubbles be in the mix because it's a bubble. Where, so where, bubble. where is that liqueur over there? I'm going to have to. Uh, this one? Yeah. We're gonna, yeah. We're oh, is the liqueur it. getting it? Well, oh, we, nice. well, I mean, I mean or you, we can do the. We all make the rules. So this was the mixture. Wait, yeah, this was, was the, this was the hot toddy. Okay, so this and one right this here, one I think, was, was the my, that. This was probably my favorite of the night. Oh, the well. mixture yeah. of. Yay. This was the one that had the botanical, yes, right? And that's the elderberry. The elderberry and the botanical with the lemon. And the ginger beer, a little bit of ginger beer in there too. Yeah, I can see Which that. Which the ginger beer, FYI, for people who don't know, is non-alcoholic. The word beer is in it, but there's no alcohol. It's not, it's, a mocktail. it's not very often on this show I drink something, I feel like I'm doing something healthy for my body. Normally, Isn't that wonderful? Just degradating. Isn't it great? Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you so much. Every once in a while, two guys you, can be healthy and yeah, we can be two, proud of uh, you know, what we're doing for our health and wellness. wellness. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so that's what's winning tonight? Uh, there we go. Okay. Right there. Wow. Your, uh, well, well, it's not really this one, it's this yes. one and whatever else you had that's that's going on there. We're going to have to. Absolutely. It'll be the first time it was a mixture of things that. Yeah, right. There we go. Well, I, once again, I want to thank our guest, uh, Kaylin McBee. Kaylin, thank you again for bringing us some fantastic selections. It's always a pleasure when you're on the show. I was the winner tonight. <laughs> you were the I'm winner so tonight. Excited. You were the winner. Thank you so much. Rocky, of course, uh, you know, expertise is always spot on. For, and for the second show in a row, I'm riding, but um, sitting in the middle seat. I like that. Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, so I don't know so what's coming over the next kind of, few months. Kind of digging this. We're going to see this show probably in February, or I'm sorry, late February, maybe early March. Who knows what's next? We still want to film in a restaurant. We'll keep you posted on that. But until next time, keep all of us, including Kayla McBee and Balance Health and Wellness Center, in, in your, your wine, wine cellar. cellar.